I, I have to confess, I, I love champagne tastings. <laughs> and an evening like this, I, I look forward to, because I do think that tasting champagne, it is just they're the, they're the ones that invigorate. They're the ones that I, I just get a lot of pleasure from. So thanks for giving me an opportunity this evening. And what we've got this evening is, is really quite special. Um, I've been working with, with Don Perignon and Mert Hennessy for a number of years. Uh, we've never done a tasting like this. And it says a great deal for, for the um, ability, I think, of Jordan to negotiate internally and probably for the persuasiveness of Nick and Chris at Finest Bubble that we can do this tasting of a, a, a horizontal tasting of a mature vintage. To my mind, 1998, it's a, it's a vintage which actually gave an awful lot of pleasure quite early in the day as well. But it's one of those vintages which just, which just works, where I find, and I'm preempting the champagnes here, but I find there's a very natural balance about 1998 as a vintage. Now, we're kicking off with the Dom Ruinard uh, Blanc de Blanc. Um, so this is the Dom Ruinard 1998, served, as you can see, from Magnum. You're not seeing double already. Um, served from Magnum. And this is, I, I, I'll be totally honest, there, there are champagnes here. I have, although I have drunk all of them before at some stage, some of them I haven't drunk for three or four years. And this one, certainly I haven't drunk for three or four years. And that's why I've been, one of the reasons I've been looking forward to the evening. So if I'm taking time to taste these and just muse over them myself, uh, it's for precisely that reason. I want to refresh my memory. If I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a minute, a couple of minutes, just to taste it yourself so I can taste it. Have a chat about it if you want. And I'll, I'll stop you when I need to interrupt. <coughs> Well, I hope you're talking about the champagne. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, wow, where do you start with this? You know, you know that there's various things that strike me about this. The, the first thing is, is something that I've found increasingly with champagne, where I th and it's an area where I think it differs from other grape wines. And that's that with, with many other grape wines, still wines, even when they're young, if they're really good, you can tell they have... A, a length on the palate and a length of flavour, a real finish, even when they're youthful. I find champagne doesn't. I find really top quality champagnes, when they're first released, are often quite short. But what's striking is just a lovely seamlessness, a balance, a core of flavour on the palate. But the finish isn't always that exciting when they're young. And so I don't think one can apply all, apply all the same rules of wine appreciation to young champagne as we do with, with other wines. Here, I've got a champagne which is more mature, what are we, 16 years old now, and the finish is just fantastic. And this is, that's a finish that has developed over the years. And what I really like about that, I said before we tasted it, when I last tried it, my note was that it was a mature champagne. My note would still be that this is a mature, mature champagne, but that doesn't mean that it's past its peak. It may not be at its peak. I don't know. Although I find it hard to imagine how it's going to get much more interesting than where it is at the moment. Because at the moment it's at that lovely stage where it's combining tertiary notes without being oxidised. So it's tertiary and complex. And there are sherried notes along with the, 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 the brioche and uh, the typical mature champagne notes. But it's not old. And the finish is so fresh, so lifted, so long, you have to believe that this could go on a very long time. And as it happens, of course, Dom Ruinard does have a reputation for being able to age many years. I, th I think often when, with a, a vintage like 2004, which is a good vintage, and I did try it next door, I thought the, the Dom Ruinard was very precise, very clean. There was a sort of minerality to it at this stage, I thought. But it hadn't developed anything like the complexity that I find now. And I find both aromatically and in terms of my taste buds, this is much more exciting champagne. That's not to say I'd, I wouldn't rate the 2004. I would. But it's just it's chalk and cheese. 
in a way. That is a very youthful champagne, and I love the fact that Nick has chosen this as a theme this evening, because it does, it genuinely gives us an opportunity to see how the 2004 might develop. There are a lot of similarities between the two vintages, and so I think this, this does, it gives us a, a window on maybe that evolution over the next six years. I mean, it's partly, I mean, colour-wise, we can see that it's looking more mature. Aromatically, it's much more complex. And remember, when we're talking about wines improving, we're not just talking about them improving in taste. When we talk about wines improving, a key criterion is always gaining complexity on the nose. Because our sense of smell informs our sense of taste, it's that extra complexity on the nose which is absolutely key to a, a wine improving and reaching its peak. And it, at, at, its <laughs> at its ultimate level, it gets a bit silly, because when wines get to 40 or 50 years old, and I'd include champagnes in this, the aromas can be sensational, but the palate can be tired and a bit flat. And I, I personally think that with really old wines, 80 or 90% of the pleasure is in the smell not necessarily what it tastes of, which I know sounds rather dull, but, uh, but, it's, but I think it's true. And this is, but this is at that lovely stage where it's got development of aromatics, but it's also really delicious to drink.